Hi, my name is Amelia Hackinson, and I am going, I'm back to reading Sartor Sardis by Thomas Carlyle. Um, I'm on chapter eight, and it's called The World Out of Clothes. Please like and subscribe. Please, please, please do your sister a favor. There's no other audio file of this book, so I'm just trying to help y'all out. If in the descriptive historical portion of this volume, Teufelsdrock, discussing merely the Verdun, origin and successive improvement of clothes, has astonished many a reader, much more will he in the speculative philosophical portion, which he treats of their Verkin, or influences. It is here that the present editor first feels the pressure of his task, for here, properly, the higher and new philosophy of clothes commences, all untried, almost inconceivable region, or chaos, inventoring upon which, how difficult, yet how unspeakably important it is to know what course of survey and conquest is the true one, where the footing is firm, substance and will, sub substance and will bear us where it is hollow or mere cloud and may engulf us teufelstrock undertakes no less than to expound the moral political even religious influences of clothes he undertakes to make than to expound the moral political even religious influence of clothes he undertakes to make manifest in its thousandfold bearings this grand proposition that man's earthly interests are all hooked and buttoned together and held up by clothes. He says in so many words, society is founded upon cloth, and again, society sails through in the infinitude of on cloth as on false mantle, or rather like the sheet of clean and unclean beasts in the apostle's dream, and without such sheet or mantle would sink to endless depths or mount to inane limbos, and in either case be no more. By what chains or indeed infinitely completed tissues of meditation in this grand theorem is here unfolded and innumerable pr practical corollaries are drawn therefrom, it will perhaps a mad ambition to, to attempt exhibiting. Our professor's method is not, in any case, that of common school logic, where the truths all stand in a row, each holding by the skirts of the other, but at best that of practical reason, proceeding by large intuition over a whole systematic groups and kingdoms, whereby we might say a noble complexity, almost like that of nature, reigns and his philosophy or spiritual picture of nature, a mighty maze, yet as faith whispers, not without a plan. Nay, we complained above that certain ignoble complexity, what we must call mere confusion, was also discernible. Often also we have to exclaim, would to heaven those same biographical documents were come, for it seems as if this demonstration lay much in the author's individuality, as if it were not the not argument that had taught him, but experience. At present, it is only in local glimpses, and by significant fragments picked often at wide enough intervals from the original volume and carefully collated that we can hope to impart some outline or foreshadow of this doctrine. Readers of any intelligence are once more invited to favor us with their most con concentrated attention. Let these, after intense consideration and not till then, pronounce whether on the utmost verge of our actual horizon there is not a looming as of land, a promise of new fortunate island, perhaps whole undiscovered Americas, for such have canvas to sail thither, as exordium to the whole stand here at the following long citation. With men of speculative turn, writes Teufelsdrock, there come seasons, meditative, sweet, yet awful hours, when in wonder and fear you ask yourself that unanswerable question, who am I, the thing that can say, T das wasen das sick ich nint. The world, with its loud trafficking, retires in the distance, and through the paper hangings and stone walls and thick plied tissues of commerce and polity, and all the living and lifeless integuments of society and, and a body, wherewith your existence sits surrounded, the sight reaches forth into the void, deep, and you, wherewith your existence sits surrounded, the sight reaches forth into the void, deep, and you, 
are alone with the universe and silently commune with it as one mysterious presence with another. Who am I? What is this me? A voice, a motion, an appearance, some embodied, visualized idea to the eternal mind? Cogito ergo sum. Alas, poor Cog Cogitator. <laughs> this takes us but little way. Sure enough, I am, and lately was not. But whence? How? Where to? The answer lies around, written in all colors and motions, uttered in all tones of jubilee and wail, and thousand-figured, thousand-voiced, harmonious nature. But where is the cunning eye and ear to whom God-written apocalypse will yield articulate meaning? Meaning, we sit as in boundless phantasmagoria and dream grotto, boundless for the faintest star, the remotest century, lies not even nearer the verge thereof. Sounds and many colored visions flit around our senses, but him, the unslumbering, whose work both dream and dreamer are, we see not, except in rare half waking moments, suspect not. Creation, says one, lies before us like glorious rainbow, but the sun that made it lies behind us, hidden from us. Then in that strange dream, how we clutch at shadows as if they were substances and sleep deepest while fancying ourselves most awake. Which of your philosophical systems is other than a dream theorem, a net quotient confidently given out where divisor and dividend are both unknown? What are your all... What are all your national wars with their Moscow retreats and sanguinary hate-filled revolutions but this somnambulism of uneasy sleepers? The dreaming, this, som this somnambulism is what we on earth call life, wherein the most indeed undoubtingly wonder as if they knew right hand from left, yet they only are wise who know they know nothing." Pity that all metaphysics had, hither, had hitherto proved so inexpressively unproductive the secret of man's being. Let me see if I can. Mm. All right, yeah, sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, here. Is that better? Okay. Pity that all met metaphysics had hitherto proved so inexpressively unproductive. The secret of man's being is still like the Sphinx's secret, a riddle that cannot read, for ignorance of which he suffers death, the worst death, a spiritual. What are your axioms and categories and systems and aphorisms? Words, words, high air castles are cunningly built of words, the words well bedded also in good logic mortar, wherein, however, no knowledge will come to lodge. The whole is greater than the part. How exceedingly true. Nature abhors vacuum. How exceedingly false and calamity calamnious again nothing can act but where it is with all my heart only where is it be not the slave of words is not the distant the dead while i love it and long for it and mourn for it here in the genuine sense as truly as the floor i stand on but that same where with its brother when are from the first master colors of our dream grotto Say rather the canvas, the warp and woof thereof, whereon all our dreams and life visions are painted. Nevertheless, has not a deeper meditation taught certain of every climate and age that the where and when so mysteriously inseparable from all our thoughts but are but superficial terrestrial adhesions to thought that the seer may discern them where they mount up, mount up out of the celestial everywhere and forever? Have not all nations conceived their God as omnipresent and eternal, as existing in a universal here and an everlasting now? Think well, thou too wilt find space, but it is mode for our human sense. So likewise time, there is no space and no time. We are, we know not what, light sparkles floating in the ether of deity. So that... 
this so solid seeming world after all were but an air image our me the only reality and nature with its thousandfold production and destruction but the reflex of our own inward force, the fantasy of our dream, or what the earth spirit in Faust names it, the living visible garment of God. Quote, in beings floods and action storm, I walk and work above, beneath, work and weave in endless motion, birth and death, an infinite ocean, a, a seizing and giving the fire of living. Tis thus at roaring loom of time I ply and weave for the God the garment thou seest him by. Of twenty million, uh, unquote, of, of twenty millions that have read and spouted this thunder speech of the Erdgeist, are there yet twenty units of us that have learned the meaning thereof? It was in some such mood when we wearied for done these high speculations that I first came upon the question. Sorry, I've got shit all over this. Stop it, Pluto. Sorry, my dog. Here, hold on. Let me get this. Sorry. Is this better like that? I guess so. Okay. It was in such mood when wearied and foredone with these high speculations that I first came upon the question of clothes. Strange enough, it strikes me, is this same fact of there being tailors and tailored? The horse I ride has his own fell. Strip him of the girths and flaps and extraneous mm. tags I have fastened round him, and the noble creature is his own semster and weaver and spinner, nay, his own bootmaker, jeweler, and man milliner. He bounds free... He bounds free through the valleys with a perennial rainproof court suit on his body, wherein warmth and easiness of fit have reached perfection. Nay, the graces have also been considered, and frills and fringes with gay variety of color, featly appended, and ever in the right place, are not wanting. While I, good heaven, have thatched myself over with dead fleeces of sheep, the bark of vegetables, the entrails of worms, the hides of oxen or seals, the felt of furred beasts, and, the wa and walk up broad a moving rag screen overheaped with the shreds and tatters raked from the charnel house of nature where they would have rotted to rot on me more slowly day after day i must thatch myself anew day after day this despicable thatch must lose some film of its thickness some film of it frayed away by tear and wear must be brushed off into the ash pit into the lace stall till the degrees whole having brushed thither and i the dust making patent rat grinder to get new material to grind down o oh, suitor brutish vile most vile for i not too a compact all enclosing skin wider wider or dingier am i a botched mass of tailors and cobbler's shreds then or tightly articulated homogeneous little figure automatic nay alive quote strange enough how creatures of the human kind shut their eyes to the plainest facts and by the mere inertia of oblivion and stupidity live at ease in the midst of wonders and terrors. But indeed man is and was always a blockhead and dullard, much readier to feel and digest than to want everywhere leads him by the nose. Thus let us but a rising of the sun, let but a creation of the world happen twice, and it ceases to be marvelous, to be noteworthy or noticeable. Perhaps not once in a lifetime does it occur to your ordinary biped, or of any country or generation, be gold-mantled, prince or russet jerkin, peasant, that this vest, that his vestments and his self are not one and indivisible, that he is naked without vestments till he buy or steal such, and by forethought sew and button them. Quote, For my own part, these consideration of our clothes thatch and how reaching inwards, even to our heart of hearts, it tailorizes and demoralizes us, fill me with certain horror at myself and mankind, almost as one feels at those Dutch cows, which during the wet season you see grazing deliberately with jackets and petticoats of striped sacking in the meadows of Gouda. Nevertheless, there is something great in the moment when man first strips himself of adventurous rapages and sees indeed that he is naked and, as swift has it, a forked straddling animal with bandy legs yet also a spirit and unutterable mystery of mysteries, unquote. The next chapter is titled Nine Atomitism, and I'll probably do that later today. Thank you for listening so, so, so much. Please 
comment um, how you feel, how this makes you feel. If you have any questions, I would love to answer. Um, I did my thesis on this book. Um, I it's it's the most important work to me, and I'm very passionate about it. And I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening.